This is a miniature schnauzer. The most important part of this um, slide is to show that my hand is on his chest. Always try to keep one hand on the chest and one, one of your arms tucked under his front legs. The hand on the fore chest is really important. The dog feels super secure like that, so that when you take him out of the cage, he doesn't feel like he's going to fall. And you know, sometimes dogs sort of scramble. You need to also remember to always, always put a, a leash on a dog when he's in the cage, especially if it's a dog you don't know, because you may not be able to get him back out of the cage. You, you know, they back up into the corner and they don't want to come out, and you go, uh-oh, now I'm in trouble, because now I have to reach in there and try and haul him out. If you've forgotten to leave the leash on the dog, sometimes what does work if you can't get him out, you can't coax him out, you want to stand, open the door and stand to one side. Again, don't block the entrance to the cage because all the dog sees is this big person looming over the cage and there's no way he wants to come out now. So just stand a little to the side and use a, a nice cheerful voice, come on, let's go, come on, and then he thinks he's going home. And you've tricked him and he'll come out. And if that doesn't work, put the cage on the floor, open the door, step away, and let him walk out, and then grab him. Now this is a large dog. This is um, kind of a collie mix. I call this a bear hug. And it's really the safest, most secure way to pick up a big dog. Before you ever lift a dog, test to make sure you can actually lift him. Some dogs, this dog looks like a big dog. He wasn't heavy. He was all fur. He probably weighed about 50 pounds. But sometimes they're heavier than you think, and you can cause yourself a back injury. So just when you're, when you're bending down, just pick him up a tiny little bit and make sure that you can. And if you can't, have the owner help you or your assistant if you're lucky enough to have one. You see that my arms are all the way around the dog in a bear hug. You're not going to lose the dog. He's not going to be able to, to, when you're halfway to your feet, he's not going to be able to twist, which can also injure your back. You've got him in a, a very secure position. Now when you do get the dog on the table, if he's a very nervous dog, so sometimes the biggest challenge is to get them to stay on their feet. I often, very, very often, put um, a nervous dog, put the noose around his waist. And you can also secure him at the other end as well. You can, use, you can use a grooming arm and a noose at either end of the table and have him secured in both places. If a noose isn't going to be big enough, you can use a tie-out cable. You know what that is? That's a cable with a clip on either end. Use one of those and just loop it around. Now, a lot of people use the high-velocity dryer. I think we probably all do. But you can't use the high-velocity dryer on every dog. And you can't assume that, that every dog is going to let you use it. Some dogs just never, ever get used to it if you have a very noisy one. The best thing to do is you can try to use it on their body, but never try to use it on their head. Unless it's a, you know, a big old happy golden retriever that really doesn't care what you do to them. But a little nervous dog, don't go anywhere near his head. And you want to cover his ear and his face as much as possible when you're anywhere near his head. And that means if you're doing the front of his chest. If he starts to bark, and it's even a dog that you've groomed before and he's always been fine with the high velocity dryer, but today he's not. If he's barking, whimpering, jumping around or crying, you need to stop. Because remember, this dryer was designed to uh, remove water from the coat. It's not actually designed to fully dry a dog. And I know that sometimes we like to use it as much as possible. But on a nervous dog, you've got to stop because you might shatter that dog's um, confidence completely and he might have a, an accident and you won't be able to get him uh, calmed down again. Don't keep nervous dogs a long time. If the owner's told you that the dog is nervous or you know he's nervous, arrange ahead of time when they should come back and pick up the dog. Do that nervous dog first. Don't, don't keep him hanging around in the cage because the longer he's with you, the more nervous he's going to get. He's not going to calm down. So when he's ready, call the owner if, he, if the owner hasn't shown up so they can come and get the dog. 
lengthy separation is a torture for this kind of dog and it will make him even more apprehensive the next time he comes in if he's had to spend a half a day or a whole day with you.